I want you to know that there are there's two mindsets. I mean, you guys have been studying for a while, so I'm just giving you this observation after 20 or so years of teaching. Uh, there are students whose only concern is growth. That's their only concern. They just want to learn this stuff. That's it. Like their sense of accomplishment doesn't come from completing a book or completing a program or completing a curriculum or completing a class or getting a, or, you know, I finished or I'm, or, or even, oh, I'm all the way, I'm up to speed with the live sessions. I'm not behind. That's not what gives them a sense of accomplishment. What gives them a sense of accomplishment is they're growing. And when you can, when you concern yourself with growth, then you become unconcerned with everything extra. You become unconcerned with the growth of others. You become unconcerned with the pace of the class. You become unconcerned whether you finish the book or not. The only thing on your mind is growth. Now, there are other uh, people, the majority of people in the world, whose concern is rank. It's not growth, it's rank. The rank means I want to keep up with other people. I want... I want Ustad to be proud of me. I want to be able to say I finished the program. I want to uh, complete this material. Like they're somewhere in there. Yes, of course. They, if you ask them flat out, why are you doing this? To learn Arabic. Yeah, but if you dig a little bit deeper, the mindset is not a growth mindset. It's actually a rank mindset, right? And this mindset permeates in every part of life. There's two kinds of people that do work. There's people that do work and learn, whether it's learning Arabic like you guys are, or they're working, or they're the way they operate in their family, the way they operate in life, they operate from a mindset of growth. And others, they operate from a mindset of rank. Everything they do, they keep thinking, where do I rank with this? How do I rank compared to others? What are people going to say about this? You know, and there, it's all, there's always somebody else in the equation. In growth, nobody else is on the equation. Nobody else is in your horizon, just you. But in, in rank, somebody else. So I'll tell you, for example, I feel personally there are gaps in my knowledge of Arabic. Still, there are many gaps in my knowledge of Arabic. And I want to fill those gaps. And I want to go to a teacher and say, hey, I want to, I want to do this curriculum. And they can, they can say to me, okay, so you're intermediate or you're advanced. Let me do this. And my mindset is, no, I actually really want to grow. So I'm going to start from the beginning and make sure I didn't miss anything. This is for myself. I'm not talking about you guys. I'm going to make sure I didn't miss anything because even in the fundamentals or the basics, maybe there are some things that I've forgotten or I need review on. And I don't want to miss any of that because the thing that's most valuable to me in my own pursuit of education is growth. Not, oh, I finished this course and I also have this. You know, when, when I see people, when they introduce themselves and they tell me what degrees they got or where they graduated from or they did this. The, the mindset, it's not that I'm, it's really nice that you graduated from somewhere. It's really cool. But the mindset is still of, I want to show you where I rank because of what I have accomplished. Right. And this is the kind of thing, even when hiring somebody, uh, I don't want to see, don't, don't tell me what you've done. You already did it. It's like, cool. You did it. Tell me about what you're going to do and how you're going to keep growing as you do it. Like, that's what I'm interested in hearing, right? So this is the same mentality I want you to have. The reason I'm bringing this up is as we reach the end of the textbook, I want some students that have been keeping up. They know the material. Like, Saad, you're a good candidate. I think Shazi, you're also a good candidate. Others that have come online are good candidates. Some of you may be struggling with putting a basic jumla together still. Some may be, some may be struggling. If I, if I had you read the first chapter of the book, we're on chapter 40 almost, but if I had you read the first chapter, you'd still have some struggles and mistakes. But you're so hung up on the idea that I want to be with everyone and I want to finish, that you are now losing sight of your growth mentality. You're no longer growing. You're just trying to hold on to the rank of being a, a student that's advancing. Let go of the growth mindset. And... Remind me, Saad, with Tasari or Hunsabi. Well, we'll talk about that. But inshallah, like th this is uh, this is something that I want to see going further. I want to take only the students that are where I am right now, and they're not holding on to the live sessions because they're not accepting that they haven't reached that stage of growth yet. It's not a hit on your pride. 
not having learned something to perfection doesn't make you a lesser person. Struggling with the material doesn't make you a lesser person. You're not as good at Arabic doesn't make you a lesser person. Like I'm reminded of Khadija's example, who was very hurt at first that she wasn't doing well after putting so much work in. And I said, you need to take a breath, calm down, go back and start at the basics. And she's been doing that, alhamdulillah. She sends me questions every once in a while. And from her questions, I can see remarkable growth. Growth I didn't see for a long time in her because she was too concerned with rank and she didn't realize it. So this is not making you a bad person. It's just, I want you to become self-aware. Are you actually learning in the most optimal way? And are you, are you able to, you know, we can give khutbahs about humility and khutbahs about not having pride, but this is where pride really kicks in. Am I willing to kick my own pride in the face and say, hey, I need to go back to some of the basics. Instead of the moment you hear fundamentals or basic, you're like, what are basics? I know those. <laughs> How could you? I'm so hurt. <laughs> this is... <laughs> you won't grow. You won't grow. So, you know, de develop that mindset and inshallah you'll go far. And you, any, anything you learn, you'll do great. And especially with Arabic. Just, and, and I'm telling you, I've tried to learn things before. And the only time I've really truly learned something is when I have growth mindset. I, it, it disappears over time. It disappears. You just you get concerned with finishing. I, I don't want you to finish. I want you to finish with Ihsan. And if you have to go through the whole book, chapter one to forty, the whole as create. Don't wait for me to create it. This is your intensive for yourself. I'm going to read the whole book. You know, like an Al Jazeera anchor before I do something else. Do it. For God's sake, do it. And then my recommendation to those of you that have been keeping up as we approach the end of the book, I'm not going to teach this to you. I'm going to give this to you to do because I've I'm 1 million percent certain you are capable of doing this on your own. 1 million percent. Uh, the elementary modern standard Arabic textbook, the orange book I've referred to before, you should finish it beginning like from page 100 to the end. I think it's chapters 1 through 30. Um, run through it. You can do all the exercises. You can read all the texts, all the drills. Some of the terminology will be difficult, but it won't be. Don't depend on me. Don't email me. What does this mean? What does this mean? Look it up. Become independent. And you can, you can crush that textbook. And by the way, that textbook is taught over two semesters at the university. Uh, it doesn't, it's never taught in one semester. And then the green book on top of that is taught another two semesters. So that's two years of university Arabic studies in that book. And I think you can do that book in maybe two months right now. You could, you could crush both of those books in a couple of months just after you, you finish this. That just as you're, because what that will do, what that book will force you to do is it'll start you getting you to compose Arabic. You'll, you won't, you're reading well now, alhamdulillah, but you're still struggling to put your thoughts together and compose things. It'll force you to start composing also. So that 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 <clears throat> missing skill set is going to start building up. I can't check, uh, you know, a thousand people's essays. I can't do that. There's, it's impossible. The qualitative checks are impossible. So you guys have to do some of that work. And inshallah, when you do that, as you're doing that, I'm going to start giving you some more. Because the, the, the Arabic that I'm going to be building here for you is not going to be the Arabic of speech or the Arabic of composition. It's the Arabic of reading. Analysis of text. You, you're in, I'm interested in getting you to Islamic studies, but that doesn't mean that's the only Arabic that should concern you. You should be concerned with filling the gaps of your Arabic that this program doesn't cover. This, the, the dream program is not all things Arabic. It's Islamic studies Arabic, right? But I'm aware of the other areas of Arabic, and I want you to know how to how to like start tapping into them, inshallah. Okay. This year I was supposed to try and do uh, an immersion program in Turkey. Things happen. I wasn't able to pull that off, but the plan isn't lost yet. I, what I'm what I'm hoping to do, uh, what's what's conceptualized in my mind now is, hopefully by by next summer, I'll I'll have the website made in a couple of months though, is uh, an Arabic intensive that's a month long, for people that want to do the very basic curriculum, like intensives one and two, they can come to that and do that. And then people that want to go deeper into uh, Quranic Arabic or, or rather into, into reading and advanced studies, they can do that with an Arab teacher. They can go through a text, go through a book. And then people that don't even know Alif Ba can come there in 30 days. They can start reading from the Quran. Like people at different levels of Arabic will have something to do for 30 days to enhance themselves. 
and in the evening I'll just have durus of the Quran. So I'll, I'll have, put put people in different categories in the day, and in the evening we can study a surah in depth together. Uh, inshallah, do a durus. So that's kind of the structure in my mind for an Arabic intensive. I'm gonna probably give it its original name, Quran intensive, uh, and and put that together. Right now, Turkey is looking like a really good candidate, but I'm going to finish my homework on it and uh, see if we could do that, inshallah. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep, profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves, and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in. And don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step, so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube, but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family, and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.